We're back with the 13th episode of the meal prep series. This one's going to be chimichurri chicken and rice. It tastes absolutely incredible. It's super easy to make. And like always, I'll leave all of the nutritional values in the video as well as in the description. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, starting this off, place a saucepan over high heat, add in 320 grams or 11.2 ounces of washed basmati rice, 640 grams or 640 milliliters of cold water, which is a two to one ratio, and sea salt flakes to taste. Give it all a quick stir to break up and prevent any clumps and bring it to a boil. Once boiling, place on a lid, reduce the heat to low, and cook for 14 minutes undisturbed. Next, add one kilo or 2.2 pounds of chicken breast to a mixing bowl and to this add in two teaspoons or five grams of onion powder for a strong concentrated onion flavor, two teaspoons or five grams of garlic powder, which is the same as the onion powder, giving us a nice concentrated flavor, two teaspoons or five grams of smoked paprika for smoky peppery notes and a nice color, sea salt flakes to taste, of course, cracked black pepper, 10 cracks worth, and two teaspoons or 10 milliliters of olive oil to lube these up. Let's then get our clean hands in there nice and deep like and massage our breasts, chicken that is, just until everything is evenly coated and well combined. Place a large pan over high heat, add in two teaspoons or 10 milliliters of olive oil. Once hot, add in the seasoned chicken, placing them apart from one another and sear these for three minutes or until golden and a beautiful color has formed. Once achieved, flip them over and repeat the same process, then remove and place this into a preheated oven set at 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 13 minutes. Now in the meantime, to make the chimichurri, add 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of flat leaf parsley to a blender bowl along with 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of coriander or cilantro, which is optional and isn't actually traditional in this, but it adds great flavor, three whole cloves of freshly peeled garlic, one teaspoon or two grams of dried oregano for a slight minty freshness, one quarter of a teaspoon or 0.2 grams of dried chili flakes, which can be left out if you're not a fan, one third of a cup or 80 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil to help bind everything together and you can add more if you want it more runny, one quarter of a cup or 60 milliliters of red wine vinegar for a nice sweet acidic punch and can be subbed with lemon juice if you prefer, sea salt flakes to taste and cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. Let's then place on a lid, lock it tightly and blend this on a high until everything is broken down and well combined and you can do this in a mortar and pestle if you prefer to keep it traditional and once it's done, pop it aside for the time being. Going back to the rice, this can now be taken off the heat but leave the lid on for a final 4 minutes to allow it to finish cooking, then carefully remove the lid and use a fork or spatula to fluff it up. Also, with this method your rice won't be stuck and will be perfectly cooked. After 13 minutes, carefully remove the chicken, watching out for the escaping heat, place it onto a heat resistant surface and allow these to rest for 5 minutes for those juices to redistribute. Once rested, this can then be sliced across the grain to break up the fiber and tissue, resulting in more tender chicken, rotate it 90 degrees and slice into large diced pieces, which can be thinly sliced if you prefer, but I find it's better diced and a lot easier to eat. With that done, add the diced juicy chicken into a mixing bowl along with any resting juices, then add in the chimichurri, making sure to scrape it all in there and not waste any of this good stuff and give this all a really good mix until everything is well coated and all chimmied up. Serving this up is really simple and all that needs to be done is divide the rice by five, same again with the chimichurri chicken and don't forget to spoon over any juices left in the mixing bowl. It's then up to you, but you can serve these with some slices of lemon for a nice citrus kick, also garnishing with coriander or cilantro, which is optional, leaving us with all of these. Like always, here is all of the nutritional values, with this one being high in protein and a little higher in calories. To store these, place on the lids once cooled and keep in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for up to four months. And to reheat, simply do so in a microwave or a pan until hot. And the only thing that's then left to do is enjoy these high protein meals and we can then dig in.